Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing excellent. Welcome back to another video on the FC build. In the previous video, we got the fuel system set up, we got the Haltech wired in, we got most of it buttoned up back here from this point back. Obviously you still need to throw a few belts on, uh, but obviously not the most important thing at the moment. And what we need to work on now is from here forward, so if you didn't see in a previous video, we built our own V-mount kit that we will be testing out on the dyno as soon as we get this baby up and running. So this is our radiator setup with the bracket we made, our intercooler, and of course we need to include our big old honkin' FC oil cooler. So what we need to do is we did our best to te test fit this on the burnt FC, but we need to get it set up in here and we did have to drill a few holes for mounting points, so we need to figure out if that's going to work out just fine. And additionally, we did not have this wiring harness to work around. We did have this one, but we moved it slightly. We didn't have this AC line, which usually sits up in here. I just moved it out of the way because we're about to cut this here to accommodate it. And we also did not have these power steering lines. So the supports come down and bolt into the frame here. They bolt in further up and they bolt into the front point here. So the question we have to answer now is, can we make it fit modifying that? Do we need all three points of support if we can't make it fit until we take some of it off? Do we have to relocate these lines or can we accommodate it with those lines in there? And then we actually have to customize this radiator. So this is a Griffin dual pass radiator. It's very big. And we need to weld this shut because we're not going to be using this point. We're actually going to be using this swirl pot right up here as the high point and the fill point. And then we need to figure out how we're going to connect this to the inlet, probably with a 90 degree or something like that. And then down here on the return, we actually need to weld on a piece from our other radiator that gives it the provision for the heater core so we can run that line as well. And by we, I mean Jeff, because I don't know how to weld yet, but he is more than willing and capable of doing all that. So right now, I'm going to take this radiator off of this bracket. It's just sitting on here with two bolts, but the way it is mounted on here, I'll show you, is we have a bunch of these rubber isolators that hold it in place so it does not move around at all. And this should just come right off yep and so I'm going to be working with just this frame right here to try and get it fit up down there and figure out what we're working with so I'm going to work on that for a few minutes and I'll give you an update when I have some idea of what we're dealing with I haven't made any adjustments yet to um, accommodate this but you can see the frame is slightly in place so it bolts up in front right here and right here and it needs to pivot down a little bit more but right where this little plastic clamp is, it needs to go there and needs to go further down right there. But that's looking clear. And on this side, the front mount, as you can see, is going to be able to slip down into place. So that's good. And then in the back, I looks like if I trim off part of that angle iron, I am going to be able to slip it right behind that power steering line. And I might just get it a little bit spaced out, put some rubber on the back of it, and maybe put a spacer behind this mount here. And I think we'll be able to make it work. But first I need to do a little bit of trimming on there. And then I need to cut these lower portions to accommodate the radiator itself. So this is going really good. Um, there are a couple issues, but we're gonna work through those. So this AC line is not gonna fit because the radiator has to sit down in here. The back mount here actually lines up perfectly when it's installed for the uh, same bolt hole as this bracket to hold the power steering line. So I'm gonna be able to work with that pretty well. And I uh, just need to get, this is just sitting in here for a guide hole, but we're gonna need to get a rib nut in there, a rib nut in there. And then I've got a drill hole up here. And uh, 
I think we'll be able to take it from there. I knew for a while that I was probably going to have to make custom AC lines and might even need a new compressor because I've never got AC to work on this car, but it's definitely the goal. So everything's going to stay inside the car. We're going to figure out once we get all this mounted if we can still fit the condenser in front. If not, I'll have to get a custom one of those or a different size rather. But also, we need to come from the intercooler here and pass piping right through here. And this has always been in the way. So I think at this point, it's going to be go ahead and remove those AC lines um, just the way it's got to be. And I'll figure something else out in the future to make it work where I don't have these hard lines holding this in this weird position. But that's what we're going to go for for now. We'll go ahead and drill those holes, get those rib nuts in, and then we'll go ahead and get this installed. Mm -hmm. All right, she's pretty much uh, mounted. Need to modify a mounting hole just right down here, but in place, looking good. And as you can see, just one bolt here. Everything is clearance pretty much exactly as we had wanted. Plenty of space to not interfere with any of the pulleys, except right here. Obviously, we're going to cut this off for other reasons, but also this little nipple here pretty much touches the compressor. Well, it doesn't, but it would under load and whatnot. So now we need to look at how the heck we're going to connect this inlet just right there by the turbo up to this guy right here. And, you know, I think we can make it work. We're going to have to come down and around underneath the turbo and come up to here. So we'll probably do like a 90 degree, but angle it down and get something. Or we might just have to go to AN where we can put it exactly where we want. But that's going to be pretty difficult because if we do that, we're going to have to have some basically the same thing. Weld something on here, put a 90 and bring it up here. So I don't know. We'll go to the auto parts store, see what I can find for radiator hosing. Radiator hoses. And then from the bottom, let's see if I can see here. We're gonna weld something else on there, but that should be pretty manageable as well. So now we can grab the intercooler, throw that on top, and see what we're gonna do for piping on that as well. So let me get this big boy installed on here, and uh, we can start maybe digging through the bin of intercooler piping bends we have and see what we can figure out. I just dragged in our bin of many pipes. We have a mix of stainless steel, which we'll be using to make an exhaust just after this intake, and a lot of aluminum potential intercooler piping. So I have smaller stuff, medium stuff, pieces from old kits. So hopefully with all this jazz, even have black coated ones, Hopefully with all this jazz, and maybe even with all these couplers I have at the bottom, we'll be able to make something happen. I made some really great progress off camera just trying to fit some things into place. And let me show you first the oil cooler. I'm excited because I finally got this figured out. All right, so down here, I even put this LRB skid plate back on, which is a great protective piece, but it also helps a lot with cooling because it channels the air, obviously. So right up here, get some light. I was able to fit the oil cooler. So I did have to flip it over and flip it upside down. So you can see there's one of the lines there. And then right up top, we have another AN line adapter going over there. So I just put some brackets against the stock mounts and um, relocated it. So it fits really nicely there. And it's nice and tolerance down here. So there's the stock little foam underneath it. And we'll um, get some new foam there, but it gives it the clearance it needs, but also gives it a nice seal against this. Now, up top, obviously, we're concerned about the intercooler piping. So, this ugly mess, we're going to clean up new couplers and new clamps. But this is the previous iteration of the pipe coming out of the turbo. And you can see it's pointed directly right here. We also have a little um, output for our BAC valve back here. So we'll be able to utilize that. And down here, I have a variety of different shapes which we'll be able to cut and angle 
it in there and we will um, weld it on directly there so that it's a nice tight fit. So something like that. So we'll get that working. And over here, I couldn't have got any luckier. This is a piece from an intercooler kit we modified for the other FC. A little banged up, but we'll clean it up. But look at this. Now, don't mind this bracket because it stops it from fitting exactly where we want. But if I can wiggle it past those power steering lines. So, as you can see, the bracket's hitting that power steering pump. But if you can imagine, I'm going to cut that off in a minute. It fits in here. It's, it's pretty tight, but it's going to work because um, I can't. Yeah, so if I put it down and over here, you can kind of see that there's clearance against that. We'll wrap it in rubber just in case. But as you can imagine, if that bracket wasn't there, this is going to angle almost exactly where it needs to go into the intake and back here. So basically, I want to get all that stuff cut up and fit and marked so that I can pull all this out and that Jeff can weld it up. In that time, I'll finalize those brackets for the oil cooler, paint them up so they don't rust. And, oh, lastly, we need to, on the bottom of the radiator down here, I was mentioning before, get a 90 degree here so we can come up and under and into our swirl pot. And down below, we want to have the provision for the heater core to have the line come off of it. And down here, we have, and unfortunately that I ruined, it slipped off the jack and destroyed this Koyo radiator. We've since replaced, but I kept it. We have a 90 with a bead roll right here. We can cut off. And we have the heater core provision. So I'm going to get those pieces cut off, get them angled and fit up and marked as well. And then we can pull it apart. Jeff can weld it. He can make some final adjustments and then we can install it and we should be good to go. So again, we did a lot of pre-work on this on the right-hand drive FC, or excuse me, on the burnt FC. So that's why it's going so smoothly. I mean, it takes a lot of custom work, but if you guys have been watching along, that's kind of what we do at this point is custom work. So we're enjoying it. After I get that all in place, I will make some cowling for this, but it's already really really looking like it's going to be efficient with the way the air flows in across all these heat exchangers so anyway let me mark those things up make some edits and yeah looking forward to this we've been going back and forth with the intercooler setup you'll see it is off the car right now um we basically got stuck because we need different 90s couplers are not going to work they're too tall so we have those on order but there's a lot more pieces to go in here so what i've been working on today throughout the whole garage is the radiator. So if you remember, we had to cut this top piece off um, because we just need that welded shut because that is not going to be the fill port. Also, we're working on sizing up our 90 degree fitting and so on. And I actually notched out these mounting points so we can sink it a little bit lower. Don't hate on me, they were all done filed by hand so they're not perfect. But we're going to go ahead and throw it back in because I made some adjustments to that um, frame. Make sure everything fits and then we're going to fit up our filler, our inlet and outlet necks so that Jeff can get welding on it. Before I do that, I need to put in the oil cooler, which is down here, because I finalized the brackets, which go right on the stock mounts, but in the front. And I need to run the oil lines so that that is all set up and ready to go. And just like that, we have fresh new oil lines. We're under the oil cooler here. Feed and return all the way back there. And Jeff has welded a square onto the front of this to block off that hole. And now we get to put it back in the car and measure for the nice. inlet and outlets of the radiator. So it's a bit tedious, but we're getting pretty close. Yep, I got a dog in my lap. Yep. And we got this crazy beast. Don't weld anything, Kalua. So we got the radiator assembly back in the car. Everything's fitting up nicely. Now it's time to figure out where to solder on our, weld on our 
deals here. So as you can see here, well, maybe you can't see on camera, it's tight, but there is, uh, we got our hoses that we want to try and use attached here, and we got to figure out how we're going to get these soldered together, welded together. Glued. Glued, we're going to just rivet. Yeah. Lego, plus. So I'm going to go underneath here, Jeff, and then you're going to give us some marks on here about where we might want to cut it, because we are going to need to make some more adjustments here before welding. And then uh, we'll do that. Okay, do Still making great progress here. Jeff went ahead and welded this part of the neck onto the Griffin radiator. So we got that going for us now. We still have to cut that piece and test fit everything yet again. While he was doing that, I went ahead and just started working on some things we got to get done, such as I got the belts on, which is cool. I got the oil lines routed a little bit better, and I'm going to pick up another clamp for that. It's looking good. They're nice and good. And I figured out where we're going to mount our oil catch can. So with everything out, I had a pretty good opportunity to put it right in here. And that is the wrong size fitting, but we will get the right size fitting for that right there. So, but with that said, we're both very tired, um, and I think we're going to call it that for the night, but I think this sets us up to be very successful tackling all this stuff again tomorrow. So I'm not sure where we left off with the radiator, and unfortunately it's taken a little bit of superficial damage if we've been test fitting it, but still in great shape. These are the mounts for the fan, and I know people are going to wish we did a different type of fan mount, but that's the only thing we can fit with the tight clearances. But we have these two massive spall fans. We fitted, like, basically the maximum amount of fan uh, surface area we could on here. And I know it doesn't have a um, shroud on it, but it is going to have ducting, and it's going to work very well. We were experimenting with these individually and they move a lot of air and when we're moving everything's going to be funneled through here and it's going to be just fine so we got the wiring coming down here so i'll wire those in sequence and jeff already got the outlet and inlet welded on so now we can finally get this set up in the car and then finish with the intercooler i went ahead and sawed off the stock end tank fittings and we have up here some vibrant tight radius 90s which should get us to where we need to be i've done a little bit of work off camera because we're getting ready for the next stage of this intercooler project so put the hood back on obviously because i'm tired of guesstimating if it's going to all fit underneath so far everything does now our last tricky part is right here I also finished wiring up the fans. So we have two fused relays right here. Um, we have the all the wiring down here and I'm just gonna run it for a little while before I loom it up just to make sure I haven't made any mistakes there. What else have I done? Oh, I um, got the radiator finally mounted. So all the um, nuts are on this piece and also have radiator hoses. So I went with the Gates product, of course. And it's this corrugated, if you can see, let me see if I can swing it down here. Yep, it's corrugated radiator tubing. So you can really bend it to the shape you need. And that goes down here. Probably can't see it very well, but all the hoses are connected. Now it's just mocking up these last bends off the intercooler with those vibrant pieces we got so that we can, uh, I can have Jeff weld it up and then we will be buttoned up on the intercooler. The final pieces are marked for the intercooler and cut and bead rolled and so now comes the final welding together jeff's getting ready and the big test for that he's wanting to do is to figure out can we get these cast pieces joined really well to these end tanks so that's where we're going to start because if we can't do that then we're going to have to go back to the drawing board but uh so we're going to pull this out yet again
Well, Jeff just yeeted this thing and it's finished. He's like, oh, I want to try and see if I can, how the material is and then boom, <clears throat> it's done. And not too bad either. You can still almost see it says, just only a part of the V is gone. No, it looks great. Jeez Louise, this whole thing is hot. Yeah. Cool, so now a few welds over here on this piping and then hose clamps and we'll be done. With the intercooler, which is actually huge. Yeah, I mean, we already did the radiator and everything, so. Yeah, so radiator done, intercooler done, exhaust, and then what else is there left to do? Just fiddle around on the computer mostly and fill it full of fu fluids. Fluids? Fluids. So thanks to Jeff killing it with the intercooler piping last night, we're rounding the final turn to finish up the custom V-mount intercooler install. So right down here, these messes of cardboard and tape are two templates I made to make some cowling, a shroud around the back portion of the V-mount intercooler. And I'm just gonna cut them out of ABS plastic, which is this material over here. And actually, I already did it. Let me show you. So right here is the first side, so you can see here. This is one piece that I put together. It's pretty well cut out, has a nice bend in it. And I love working with this material because it's super easy to use, lightweight, but it's still strong. So that fits in there nice and snugly. So obviously we have some cowling all the way here. And on the bottom we have the LRB plate. Force everything up in there. And then this will actually be covered as well. And then on this side, a little bit bigger one because of the dimensions, but again, we have a nice cowl. So the next step is to get some rubber to make seals all along these surfaces where it's gonna be touching. And then I'm gonna drill through here at a couple points and just put some riv nuts in there so that this thing will just screw into place and be nice and strong in there and um, won't move around. And yeah, that should do it. So hopefully maximizing the cooling efficiency of the whole system. And obviously I'm gonna clean up those paint mark lines off of these things so it looks a little bit nicer. But yeah, I'm super happy with the way it came out. I honestly thought that I would um, show making them a little bit because I thought it'd take me a couple times to figure out what I was doing. But the material is so easy to work with. I just used a Dremel to cut it and shape it with a sanding drum. But yeah, look, that looks pretty cool. I mean, just sitting there, but. Oh, the light is taking, it's going crazy. But uh, yeah, it's gonna look great. So excited about that, excited to finish this up. So I'm gonna put those final touches on and be back to show you the final, final product. <laughs> well, everything is hooked up. The cowls or the shrouding is installed and I am super happy with how it looks. Take a look. I could clean this up a little bit. Look at this. It came out really well. It fits nicely. We've got a tight seal everywhere with, I used some vacuum tubing around some edges and some foam in different places. And it just looks like nice and clean now. And again, we'll have a plate here. I'm gonna install that once we've tested everything because obviously I have relays down here. It looks great over here. Piping, Jeff killed it and we made it work even with the power steering pump and there is actually clearance on all sides there. I think it's gonna knock a little bit, but we'll see, maybe wrap it in some of the rubber. And um, that's one huge project that's taken months and months of designing, but we did design it, we did fab it ourselves. Jeff welded everything together and it's gonna work. So Jeff's already moved on to the next project, which is the exhaust. So, oh, so I'm gonna get working with him on that as well. Thank you everyone for watching. Please remember to check out the links in the description below. Be kind to each other out there. And when they ask you, tell them you want more.